Hospital workers, what was the dumbest thing you saw a patient do immediately after leaving? Story one, I feel like I am that person. When I was 15, I broke my arm, went to the hospital, got a cast, went about for a few weeks and got it removed. Great, I have my arm back. Now, I wasn't the brightest kid and needed everything explained to me. No one told me not to have an arm wrestle with my fresh out of cast arm. No one explained it was still healing. Four hours after having my cast removed, I was back in A&E and getting a new x-ray and then a new cast put on by the same nurse who just took it off. I have never seen such disappointment in the eyes of someone who wasn't my mother. Story 2. Patient obese enough to be in a wheelchair went outside for a smoke. Cigarette in one hand, inhaler in the other. One puff of the cigarette, one puff of the inhaler. Inhalers are often used for bronchial dilation. I imagine that would increase the effects of smoking. Mind you, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I just recognize how it might work. Story 3. When I was a nursing student, I did a rotation on the transitional care unit in my first year of school, where people go to wait for a nursing home placement. Had an older man as a client who did not have any cognitive impairment complain about abrasions on his penis. Okay, all is well, and I call for a doctor to look at it to get some antibiotic ointment for it. The doctor can't come to our floor for another few hours. I tell the patient this and leave to go do something. About half an hour later, it's time to go take his blood sugar, and guess what I find the man doing? Jerking off in plain sight, and his hand and penis are bloody and raw. I literally had to have a conversation with a man my grandfather's age and have to tell him not to masturbate while the abrasions are healing and to take it easier once it was healed. Story 4. Somebody lit up a cigarette in a no-smoking area with a nasal cannula on and lit their face on fire. Had to come right back into the ER. I used to work home health and I'd walk into these houses where it's obvious someone has been smoking, and they deny anyone including themselves are smoking. They smell like they just finished one right before I walked in. Anyway, I don't give a crap if people with COPD want to keep smoking. It's their life, so you don't need to lie to me, but I just don't want them to die in a fire where their face is ground zero. If you're lying to me about the situation, it's harder for me to give you the education that keeps you safe. Don't smoke with your oxygen on. I'll never understand folks lying to their doctors and medical staff. Like, folks, these people gotta keep secrets. And sometimes, have your life in their hands. If you lie to them, you're putting yourself at risk for nothing. Story 5. Not a hospital worker, but when I was five, I was visiting my grandpa in the hospital, and when we left, I was walking backwards talking to my mom. I turned around and smacked my head against a parking sign. Had to immediately go back into the hospital to ask for some ice. I imagine the nurse watching got a laugh out of that one. My mom sure did. I know someone who fell and broke the bone above the eye by hitting the door handle. When her mother and brother were visiting her in the hospital, she shared the entire experience in great detail, which led to her brother feeling uneasy. He tried to leave the room but fainted, hit the door handle, and broke the bone above the eye. Story 6. I work as a respiratory therapist, so part of my job is to manage ventilated patients. Often I'll have patients who are in due to drug and alcohol overdose. I remember one patient who had been intubated because they were found unconscious in their own vomit. We had the person for about two weeks intubated to protect their airway while they detoxed. Long story short, they finished detoxing, left AMA against medical advice, left AMA, AG went home, and the same day pounded a two-liter bottle of vodka, vomited, aspirated, and was found about 45 minutes after, and suffered an anoxic brain injury. They were back in the ICU the same day, intubated again, and if they are still alive, it's not without massive mental deficits. Often, people go through the whole detox cycle just to repeat the same mistakes. Alcoholism and other addictions are no joke, folks. You would think common sense would win out, but those brain chemicals are a powerful force to contend with. If you're struggling, there is no shame in seeking some help in rehab or another program. Story 7. Patient was on portable telemetry, reads heart rate and rhythm. Whenever he went off the floor for an hour, his heart rate would suddenly jump up dangerously high, then go back down before he returned. The nurse caring for him was really concerned, but had no idea what it could be. I let her know that he was putting illicit drugs directly into his central line, basically an IV that sits directly in his heart. When he got back, I educated him on how to clean his port before and after, and left some alcohol swabs with him and notified the doctor. Last thing I wanted was a systemic infection. I mean, if he survived shooting up while being hospitalized. Story 8. Worked in endoscopy as a nurse. 
Had a patient about to get an ED, a videoscope looks at your stomach, and of course, we use sedation so patients can't eat or drink for eight-ish hours prior to the procedure. This lady performed the first procedure of the day. I go in and do my pre-check. Have you had anything to eat or drink after midnight? I usually ask the same question in a couple different ways, and she said no every time. Well, came time to look in her stomach with the scope, and there were very fresh-looking breakfast tacos. How did she think we weren't going to see it? Story 9. My dad has a high cholesterol and blood pressure. He was taken to the ER with chest pains. They kept him there overnight for observation and tests, determined it wasn't a heart attack, but he needed to see his attack, but her cardiologist ASAP, and went to discharge him. As we were leaving, he told me he was craving a Big Mac and asked me to take him to McDonald's. Before I could even say no, the nurse jumped in to give him a lecture. Story 10. I had a patient leave AMA one night at 2 a.m. He said he was walking home. He signed the papers and left. I was busy, so I didn't get around to the computer documentation and discharging from the system. About two discharging hours later, the ER called the floor and asked if we had a patient by a certain name. I told her he had left AMA. Turns out he walked a few blocks and realized he couldn't go on and called an ambulance. Since he was never officially discharged, he just came back to the floor and went back to bed. Uh, leaving against medical advice is just such a bad idea, folks. But I also know the cost of healthcare in certain countries makes the idea of staying in the hospital financially terrifying. So I guess what I'm saying is really talk it through with your doctor and weigh your options, folks. Story 11. I work for a medical device company that makes bone screws. We had a patient sue us for faulty implants. Apparently his screws broke less than a month after surgery. This is a big deal, and not just from a financial standpoint, so of course we launched a full investigation. Turns out the dumb butt decided to play tackle football less than a month after his major back surgery. Our bone screws are strong, but not tackle football strong. His case was thrown out. Story 12. I work in medical imaging where patients have to drink oral contrast for their exam. Some folks really hate the stuff, and one patient, after being given the oral contrast, went outside and dumped it in the bushes and came back in and said they had drunk it. Our front desk lady actually saw her dump it in the bushes and told us about it, but we would have seen the lack of contrast in the image even if she hadn't told us. I talked to the patient and was like, we can see inside of you. We can tell if you drank it or not. Story 13. I had a patient that was a regular, scans every three months. He knew the prep and always fasted for six hours like we required. I asked all the usual questions and got the exam started. As soon as I inject the medication, he mentions in passing how he was at mass that morning and had taken communion. This is an exam that is royally messed up and invalidated if a person has consumed anything except water in the six hours prior to the injection of meds. My jaw hit the floor. When questioned, it turned out he's very religious and basically did not consider communion food or drink, host and wine. Yeah, he had to come back and repeat the test. Story 14. Discharged a patient after hysterectomy, removing uterus, stitches at top of vagina, and she went home and had intercourse, busting her stitches and allowing for her bowel to protrude through the vagina. Had to have an emergency procedure to fix it. What the F? How could she possibly be in the mood for intercourse after a hysterectomy? Why do some people think that the moment they leave the hospital after a procedure that they're completely healed and back to 100%? Do they have no concept of recovery? Holy crap, you go home with loads of papers all like, Hey, do you know we cut you open a little while ago? Don't be dumb. Story 15. Go out to the car park, meet their dealer in a car, and shoot up through their IV cannula. Then saunter back into their room as if we couldn't tell. That's why more and more hospitals won't let patients leave the floor. It's a huge liability. Not to mention, when doctors come to see the patient, they may not be in the room. Story 16. Guy was discharged from our emergency room and wanted a cab voucher to get downtown. We wouldn't give him one because he didn't meet our requirements. He walked outside, called 911, and told the ambulance to take him to a hospital downtown. I had a PT who left AMA that called 911 from our main entrance. They refused to pick her up and asked her to go to our ED. Story 17. 
In the Darwin Awards is a tale of a man in hospital with a skin problem. The staff coated him all over with a cream which is highly flammable, warned him about it, and told him to keep away from any sources of ignition. He immediately snuck outside for a smoke, went up like a Roman candle. People with oxygen tanks who continue smoking should get nominated as well. It's like they're trying to beat the lung damage by setting themselves on fire. Story 18. Patient came in for shortness of breath. She was seen and discharged. A nurse saw her walk into the parking lot, jab herself in the leg with an EpiPen, and come right back in saying that she's short of breath. That's not dumb. That's a mentally ill patient. Story 19. I work in a COVID clinic, and I had a patient come in who was just a ball of anxiety about all sorts of things, but mainly COVID. He had no symptoms either, just general anxiety. Anyway, he walked out of the clinic, immediately took off his mask, and went into the Jimmy John's across the street. Seriously? You come to specifically talk about your fears of COVID, and then you take off your mask before going into a store? Why? Look, if the last few years have taught us anything, it is that people are very reasonable and smart, no one makes wildly dumb decisions, and there certainly isn't anything to say about the intelligence of people when it comes to masks. I'm not saying anything. Nope. Story 20. I saw someone pull his newly slung arm out of its sling so he could put his jacket on as he was leaving the ER. He just stopped in front of my desk and started whimpering and yelling, Ow! Oh! as he slowly worked his arm around to get it out of the sling and into the sleeve of his jacket. I'm pretty sure it wasn't very cold outside at the time. I pleaded for him to stop, but he ignored me. It was really bizarre. Story 21. We had a guy leave AMA against medical advisory and then get hit by a bus. Right. The guy totally left the hospital of his own volition and got hit by a bus. Story 22. My brother works as a volunteer for the Red Cross. He mostly volunteers as a medic in ambulances. He told me how they picked up a guy because he crashed his bike after he didn't pay attention and got his tire stuck in some tram tracks. About three hours later, he was picked up again after he tried to ride his bike with one hand in a cast. First time round, he sprained his elbow. The second time round, he broke his shoulder on the same side. Well, he didn't disable himself on both sides. There is that as a silver lining. Story 23. Countless COPD slash asthmatics coming in for wheezing, SOB, rapid breathing. We treat them, and the second they feel better, they will state, I forgot something in my car, only to leave and light up a cig. A lady came to our ER for tachycardia and anxiety. The triage nurse, on a hunch, asked what she'd eaten that day and if she'd had any coffee. I haven't had time to eat, this now being mid-afternoon, and only four or five cups of coffee. Genuinely clueless. What's wrong with four or five cups of coffee? That's about how much I usually have, and I feel, uh, wait a sec. <clears throat> well, that's not good. Story 24. Now retired, but one of the things I liked about my hospital was the food. We have a lot of immigrants in our area, and some wise person decided to hire a pretty diverse crowd of cooks. Jamaican ladies making spicy chicken, Japanese cooks making sushi, Mexican dudes making made-to-order burritos, local barbecue, etc. And it was all very clean from a nutritional viewpoint. All of it was inspected by our RDs. And just about every day I would see patients turn down this excellent food and have their families bring them crap from fast food joints in town. Story 25. A dentist had to put a little boy, maybe three, under general anesthesia to treat his bad teeth. Everything was fine until he was about to leave and I saw his mom getting him Gatorade. Turns out it was his favorite drink and it was almost all he was drinking. The parents thought it was a fruit juice and that it was okay for him to drink. No wonder he had so many problems with his teeth. Poor little guy. For the last time, I'm pretty sure what's killing your boy's teeth is this Brondo stuff. But Brondo's got what little boys crave. It's got electrolytes. Story 26. I am in IT and was working an overnight shift in the emergency room supporting a new software rollout. A dude was brought in because he had drunkenly stumbled out in front of a car and got hit. When my shift ended around 11 a.m., I went to a little Irish pub down the street to have a beer and some lunch before I headed home to get some sleep, and lo and behold, guys who are in there drinking again. Yep, the same dude from the ER was already drinking whiskey again just hours after being released from the hospital with a broken arm and a few other injuries. Story 27. When my sister was about three, she refused to leave somewhere. Can't remember, and my parents were holding her, and my sister went limp and popped her elbow out of place, so they took her to the hospital and they fixed it. 
I crap you not, I'm not lying. The second they opened the door and stepped outside, she was already throwing a fit and went limp again the second they walked out and popped her wrist. So they had to walk back inside and get it checked, and while the nurse was trying to get her to sit still, he accidentally popped it back. Story 28. They don't always wait until they're out the doors to do something stupid. They'll have their friends sneak in drugs and shoot up on their bed. Story 29. Customary is not a hospital worker, but my grandpa ranks up there in dumb crap. He was in the hospital for lung cancer, ended up being on oxygen, and would stay on oxygen the rest of his life. As soon as he left the hospital, he pulled down his mask, lit up a cigarette, and started smoking. Personally, I think that this says more about how addictive nicotine is versus how dumb your grandpa is. You'd think he'd stop using the thing that's actively killing him, but addiction is a strong pull. Story 30. When I was working in the hospital, I had a patient who had a central line, which is an intravenous line, into a large vessel in his chest. He went in a wheelchair with a friend of his to the parking lot where his friend injected his central line with H. He overdosed his friend and pushed him into the elevator on the wheelchair and left him there. He was found in the elevator unresponsive. He was successfully resuscitated so that he could return to his life of substance abuse. Addiction is such a harsh thing. For these people to be sneaking out drugs when in that condition is just wild, but that goes to show you just how bad these drugs are and how important good rehabilitation is. Story 31. Didn't actually see this, but the story was confirmed by the patient's wife. Guy was diagnosed with appendicitis at a small rural hospital which needed to transfer him to get the surgery. He refused ambulance transfer and decided he would just drive himself to the bigger hospital. He was told not to eat anything, so of course he gets McDonald's en route, then lies about when he last ate. As the anesthesiologist was intubating him for surgery, he vomited Mickey D's into his airway, aspirated it, and ended up with aspiration pneumonia. He never came off the vent, died about a week later from his pneumonia. Oba's last meal was the best Big Mac ever. Idiot. Story 32. We had an angry drunk that came via ambulance from a city about 30 minutes away. He left AMA, walked to the nearest motel, used their phone, and then called 911 hoping to be taken back to his city. But he ended up back in our ED. Needless to say, he left the AMA again a few minutes later. Edit. He thought the doctor was a butt and probably came back wanting to be assigned another doc, but there she was asking why he was the way that he was. Story 33. Schizophrenic patient got more freedom and immediately proceeded to interrogate a gas station attendant about her gum selection. He got so mad about Stimerol, the cops were called, and so was I. Story 34. Injected H into their PICC line, big IV. Leave to go smoke a cigarette and get hit by a car. Steal from a 7-Eleven while in a hospital gown. Escape from the ER and steal an ambulance. How do you manage to steal an ambulance? Story 35. I'm a pharmacist, and one of our patients has been coming in to get nicotine chewing gum regularly for at least five years now. Problematic in itself, I know. This time he really wanted to quit, so he asked about nicotine patches, but decided they were too expensive. As I was walking home from work minutes later, he rode past me on his bike with a lit cigarette in his mouth. Story 36. Not a hospital worker, but I was in the emergency room due to a sports-related injury. Finally got let out after hours of x-rays and examinations as I was learning how to use crutches and watched someone with stitches on his arm start stretching like he was going to run all the way home. He turned around, walked towards the desk, and yelled, Your nurses are crap! After the cut on his arm reopened mid-stretch. The woman at the desk looked so tired. Honestly, I feel like that nurse should have just glared at him and said, You're a effing idiot. Screw people who don't listen to hospital staff and then get mad when it turns out they can't do cartwheels after being sliced open. Story 37. Had a mom in the ER angry that we hadn't gotten to her daughter yet. Minor injury already triaged and needed to wait for others with serious injuries. She got so mad that she left with her kids, stood outside our entrance, and called 911. The ambulance came about 10 to 15 minutes after it would have been their turn to be seen. Would have been a grand total of 30 minute wait to see our doc. Had them take the kid to another hospital instead. Way to go, mom of the year. Story 38. This doesn't fit super well, but I once had a patient who insisted on leaving the hospital, discharged against medical advice. Because it's hard to get a good night's sleep. 
Now, I will admit, the hospital is not the quietest place at night. You have doctors going around checking on sick patients, machines beeping, etc., but they are there for a reason. We could not convince him to say, so we turned to his wife. His wife said she agreed with us, but she can't change his mind. He died the next day. It was a very treatable condition, serious, but he had a good chance of recovery if he stayed. Story 39. Not a doctor, but was a struggling addict for 20 plus years. I would almost always shoot up, drink, smoke on the way back from the ER for alcohol poisoning or something like that. Glad you're still here, friend. Addiction is rough, and getting out of that took incredible strength from you. Story 40. I'm not a hospital worker, but I remember after my friend had an oil fire in his house, the firefighters had to give him oxygen and were about to call the paramedics. My friend took the mask off to light a cigarette, and the firefighter said if he did that, he wouldn't call the paramedics. My friend apparently thought about it and lit the cigarette. The firefighter took off after controlling the fire and expelling the smoke without calling paramedics because that's what you get. Story 41. Okay, this was while he was still in ED. A big guy, tattooed, claimed he was with an outlaw bikey gang. Had a broken shoulder. Me, a big guy with tattoos, not with a bikey gang. He needed help with a urine bottle. As I walked into the room, he called me a C. I looked at him, called him a moron, and walked out. He went off his nut and was then told to leave the ED and not come back. I'm still waiting for his bikey gang makes to play me a visit. It was five years ago. Clearly, he wasn't with Bikers Against Poor Grammar or you'd already be dead. Hey, commenter, it's not bikers. Didn't you read? It's bikey, which is what I will be calling bikers from now on. Ooh, look at the big tough bikey. So cute. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 42. Had a patient get an extensive and free to him surgery to fix the arm he messed up by injecting M into it. He was motivated to stay clean since he went through such a big procedure. He had to wait two hours for discharge on his day to go home, got peed, had a full-on meltdown. Said he was going to go home and get effed up. He didn't want to stay clean anymore. Came back to the ED that night, drunk as a skunk. Story 43. When I was in the business director for a practice, our building was next to the oncologists. Number of people being rolled out after chemo or radiation and lighting up a cigarette always blows my mind. Story 44. Had a guy in his 20s come in with a TBI from a car accident. Decided to discharge against medical advice. Showed up the very next day after attempting to back out of his driveway and slammed into his girlfriend's car. Story 45. Some dude and his girlfriend tried to dip on his medical bills and ran out the front door headfirst into an ambulance. Story 46. I had a patient that had surgery to remove her intestinal polyps, then went out and drank a bunch of liquor and began hemorrhaging blood. Story 47. Not a doctor, but I knew someone that is a fitness freak to an obnoxious level. She had a medical emergency intestinal blockage one day that involved major abdominal surgery and removal of part of her intestine. The day she was released from the hospital, she went back to her insane workout routine trying to make up for the muscle she lost. She claims her doctor told her she could. Her intestines ripped open. She barely survived. She still claimed after the fact that her working out had absolutely nothing to do with her body ripping open and it was just bad luck. Honestly, I feel like for some folks, working out is just as much of an addiction as drugs. Like, I like a jog and some cycling, but if you tell me to take a few weeks off, I'll grab some ice cream and park my butt on the couch. Doctor's orders. Story 48. When I worked as a CNA, we had a patient released after his hip healed. Doctor said because he was so shaky, he needed supervision while smoking. He gets home, his 40-something son leaves him with his 26-year-old. They're playing video games and refuse to watch him smoke. He ended up catching himself and the kitchen on fire. Ended up back in our care permanently. Story 49. There was a story on the news a few months ago about a woman who contracted a horrible flesh-eating disease from her dog licking her face slash mouth. She was in hospital for a long time and nearly died. Of course, she missed her pet, so they wheeled her out to go home with her family. They brought the dog. You guessed it, she let him lick her face. Story 50. Someone got a lung transplant. He walked out of the front doors and straight away took out a cigarette and started smoking. I've got a lot of sympathy for people with addiction, but if you are smoking immediately after getting a lung transplant, look, all I'm saying is if I were the one wheeling you out, I would be calling you a lot of things YouTube doesn't like me saying. Story 51. 
People leaving the hospital after being on a ventilator due to COVID-19 and shaking hands and high-fiving everyone on the way out. Story 52. Okay, this was me. I had finished up a sleep study, as to which I barely slept and had to redo it. It was 6 a.m. and I was leaving the hospital. I walked into a glass wall, which was clearly a wall. It even had visible stickers on it. Twice. Twice, I bounced off the same wall in my attempt to leave the hospital. Story 53. I used to work in a hospital in my city, and a guy who was hooked up with O2 went out to smoke a cigarette with his big O2 tank. He already had a diagnosis of lung cancer, so an explosion... Story 54. When I went through bariatric class, the instructor told a story of someone who, after surgery, ate a burrito on the way home from the hospital. They had to have another emergency surgery to fix the damage. Story 55. Broke my collarbone, went to hospital, left and tripped over a curb in the parking lot, breaking my other collarbone. Ah, oh, that must have sucked. Hope your recovery wasn't too horrible. Story 56. H. Well based on the readmit fentanyl that they thought was H. Out and back in less than an hour. Story 57. Not a hospital worker, but my teacher told us about a time she was in the hospital because she had some problems with her lungs, and when she got out, she smoked a cig and she fell unconscious. Yeah, she quit smoking after that. Story 58. Not me, but a former co-worker had a patient who snuck out to puff a C-pipe in the parking lot mid-visit while they were busy with another patient. I mean, at this point, I'm just gonna say at least it wasn't another cigarette smoker. Like, I feel at least this person had a way more intense addiction. Not to say smoking isn't a serious addiction. It is, but I used to smoke cigarettes, and if you told me I couldn't smoke for a day or two, or I might light myself on fire... I wouldn't smoke for a day or two. Not that everyone's addiction is the same, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. Maybe. Story 59. Not a doctor, but I once saw a guy that just got a wheelchair, went to the stairs, tried to get up, and stood leaning on the wheelchair and attempted to walk down and fell down the stairs and was run back into the hospital by the staff. Story 60. One night we had two guys leave our ER, start arguing, and decide to pull guns on each other and fire off some shots. They all missed, and they ran away. That was a fun night as a security guard. Story 61. Got to the hospital with a heart attack. Decided to start a healthy life the next morning. Died in a hospital yard doing workout. Story 62. The drug addict had to give Narcan another large hit and OD again less than five minutes after discharge. Story 63. I once saw a wheezing patient towing an oxygen cylinder behind him on a little cart stop halfway up a ramp for a cigarette. Dude. No! That's why you need the cylinder in the first place! Story 64. Chiropractor here had a patient come in with a shoulder injury treated adjusted. Pain is gone, just a little tender. Send him home with explicit instructions to rest. Don't use brute force or harsh movements for at least two days. Later that day, through Facebook, I learned that he went to a jiu-jitsu demonstration class championship. Story 65. He got home first, but my uncle lit a cigarette up while he was using an oxygen max with tank. He would remove the mask to take a few puffs. That did not go so well. Smokers, I know quitting is hard, and you don't even have to quit permanently, but could you please just do yourself the favor of not smoking when you are by a tank full of super flammable oxygen? Story 66. Patient came in for pain, got an IV put in, left with the IV in unbeknownst to the staff, came back overdosed. Story 67. My favorite are the people standing in the smoking area, still in their gown, puffing a cigarette with their oxygen tank in tow. But an honorable mention is the lady puffing through her crocheted tracheotomy patch. Story 68. We had a regular psych patient end up on the news in our blue psych scrubs for taking a crap in the window washing thing at a gas station. Really proud day. Story 69. Not hospital, but EMS had a patient who was released from the hospital after ODing. Coincidentally, I found out later it was my brother who ran on him the first time. Within two hours of him being released, I ran on him when he OD'd again. We didn't know until we dropped him off at the hospital that he'd just been released. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.